Hey y'all, here OS Reviews. A couple of months back, we checked out the Yumadigi Bison and Bison Pro, which were these rugged Android smartphones that packs pretty solid build for a relatively low price of around $200. It's waterproof, shockproof. Well, now the company is back with their newest generation model. This is their Yumadigi Bison 2 and 2 Pro. The Pro Edition packs two gigabytes of extra RAM, so upgrading from six to eight gigs and twice the storage, going from 128 to 256 gigabytes. But the base edition Yumadigi Bison 2 sells for around 180 bucks. It has a few upgrades versus the original generation. Notably, the display looks more modern because instead of a notch, it has a punch hole cutout now for the front-facing camera, which is still 24 megapixels. The display also has a larger 6.5-inch size compared to 6.3 inches on the previous gen, along with a faster MediaTek Helio P90 processor octa-core clocked up to 2.2 gigahertz that's further supplemented by a larger 6,150 milliamp hour capacity battery. The original gen, by the way, came with a 5,000 milliamp hour capacity pack, so that's a pretty big upgrade, retains 18 watt for fast charging and all the standard connectivity options, including it's a 4G LTE unlocked smartphone supporting dual SIM, so not quite 5G, but kind of expected for a sub $200 device. Has FM radio, NFC for contactless mobile payment, the typical GPS, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and does come with an upgraded stock Android 12 OS. With that being said, the camera array is still quite similar to last gen, including a primary 48 megapixel lens, 16 megapixel wide angle, and 5 megapixel macro close up lens. So, improvements are primarily in the form of this larger display, faster processor, and bigger battery. There is a factory pre applied screen protector that we can remove. Again, there is no additional case which is included because it's built rugged, anyways. Other accessories include just a quick user guide, a standard USB Type C charging cable accented in red like always from Yumadigi, and a charger which does support up to 18 watts for the fast charging. And perhaps the other big notable change compared to the previous generation is an overhaul in terms of the material used on the back of the device. When peeling off the protective film, it becomes a lot more apparent. It's this coarse material that kind of shimmers a little bit. It makes it seem a little bit more premium from a design perspective. However, I think as far as ruggedness is concerned, I would argue that the original material seemed a little bit more durable because because of the more scratch resistant nature of this thick rubber. Although they claim the military specifications are at the same level. Nonetheless, it does look quite clean. We have just a single speaker on the rear though, so that's very similar to last gen. Unfortunately, you don't get stereo speakers on the Bison series just yet. It is what it is. The camera cluster looks again quite similar to before and also includes the thermometer for measuring temperature, which is a feature that Yumadigi has pretty much kept on all of their devices. The barometer is also built on in for measuring the air pressure. Now there's an ever so slight raise to the camera bump, but it's not too bad. And overall, if you're setting the phone down onto a flat surface, it doesn't wobble around too much, as you can see there. It has been improved compared to the last generation model, which has a little bit more of a wobble to it. And in terms of dimensions, the phone still feels quite similar to last generation, maybe just a touch taller to accommodate the larger 0.2 inch size display. Um, but overall, the build still feels quite similar, especially with the metal rails. The top of your house is a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a rarity these days and really nice to see. There's also access to a volume rocker, a power key that also dubs as a fingerprint sensor. Then there are two programmable keys on this phone, accented in red, and then we have a second button on the other end. And these can be used to trigger different commands. One of the bumper edges also acts as a lanyard strap. Bottom here houses just the Type-C port for charging, and then the other end houses just the dual SIM card slash micro SD card slot for expanding the built-in memory. Coming over to the front of the device, again, the 6.5 inch IPS full HD resolution display, I think overall looks quite good for a budget device. Fingerprint scanner, by the way, is also pretty fast and responsive, as you can see there, and overall works as you would expect, even when the phone is turned off. One thing I will say though, is there definitely are some thicker bezels on this device compared to a regular phone. That's again, meant to absorb shock and prevent the display from getting as easily damaged, but it's not gonna seem quite as immersive, especially there's a little bit of a larger chin at the bottom as you can see but overall i think it's still a bit of an improvement versus the previous generation which had even larger bezels especially the water drop notch compared to this one android 12 rom is relatively clean you don't get too much extras on here aside from a handful of toolbox features which are pretty common on most rugged phones it allows you to take a measurement of your surrounding noise level you have extra tools like a compass 
barometer here as well as a pedometer for measuring steps uh, that you can also leverage the different sensors here to do and also the thermometer which by the way by default the left key here is programmed out of the box to launch into that and you're able to measure the temperature of other people just by putting it onto their forehead and then taking a measurement objects you can also measure just by putting it at least one to two centimeters away and then hitting on the measure key and overall it's not bad i think the speed and accuracy of the thermometer has been improved compared to some of their earlier models. But aside from that, there are just the essential Google apps built on in, including the Play Store that you can use to download your own content, and that's it. So extremely clean and without really much bloat, which is great. All the overall animations, fluidity here are just carried over from regular Android 12. This is a mid-tier chipset, similar to something in the Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 to 700 series line, so not shabby for getting your basic tasks done. Now, one thing I will say here is by default, you actually don't get the drawer on the home screen, but you can bring that back just by long holding for a few seconds, then going into home screen options. And now we have the ability to have the full list of applications back. Jumping into settings, you can find the aforementioned controls for the smart key to remap it for accessing different things, including what a single click, double click, and a long press can trigger. So you can actually do up to six different commands using the two buttons here to either open different things such as the flashlight, other applications, using it to take photos when your phone is underwater and the display is harder to control. Otherwise, let's jump into the camera next. So overall, I would say that camera performance on budget phones and rugged devices have never been something that's super outstanding, but this certainly gets the job done and it's not shabby for its price point. We do have access to controls like an HDR mode, although turning this on will usually increase the processing time as you can see there. And if I turn again HDR off, it just snaps away like that. There's also an AI mode which they've retained that can automatically recognize some simple scenes and optimize the colors and contrast to adjust um, automatically. Other options here include the wide angle lens which is pretty handy to use to get more within one frame of shot as well as capture the aforementioned macro lens 5 megapixels. Now what I will say is I personally would prefer having something like a telephoto lens in lieu of a macro lens. Um, however, it still comes in handy at times. First of all, standing in the same position, this is what the regular lens looks like versus the wide angle. So you get about, again, 20 to 30 percent more within the frame of shot, although the resolution and detail, of course, are not quite as good as the primary lens. Here are some other examples using HDR mode at daytime and overall the effect is quite good in terms of colors are pleasing to the eye you do get sufficient detail and overall it's really not shabby for just capturing some moments as a budget phone that is again sitting for under two hundred dollars some other quick samples here you can get pretty close up to objects including coins and other details which i think overall does actually look reasonably sharp at least it's better than some of the other competitors which have just a 2 megapixel macro lens. It does support up to 4K resolution, which is pretty decent, although again, there's no optical image stabilization, so if you're jumping around a lot, it's going to seem a little more jittery, although in daytime conditions, it's passable for, again, a phone in this price range. Let's try jumping into the experience watching back media. Alright, so some takeaways here being that, again, it is just a single speaker at the back, which is, of course, never going to be quite as immersive. However, loudness is adequate, and the overall display does present itself as a pretty comfortable experience for watching back media. It's large and spacious, and still looks, again, pretty good in terms of the overall sharpness, as well as the colors. Uh, are vibrant enough. Brightness levels are also slightly improved, I would say, compared to the last generation. It's something that you can still, for the most part, make out even if there's a bit of sunlight hitting on it. Not quite as bright as an OLED display, of course, but for this price, I think it's doing a pretty fair job. One thing I will say here, though, is the display is a 60 hertz panel, but it's still forgivable, I think, for a phone that is sitting at around 180 bucks. Multitasking, jumping around, you'll see some occasional moments of hesitation, but really it's not bad. The entire phone still feels quite comfortable to hold, never really overheats, very cool in terms of operation. Now we can take a quick look at how it fares in terms of web browsing. So once again, 
I think the display here is doing a really good job, coupled with the Helio P90, which is really not a slouch. Uh, things are still loading along here pretty well, and overall the reception quality also seems quite strong. It's, it's using dual band 2.4G and 5G Wi-Fi, as well as again 4G LTE bands all seem to get a pretty tight connection in my testing, even I'm a little bit further away from the router at the moment, and it can Pages here do load at a reasonable speed. Of course, it's going to be maybe a split second slower than a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, but we're also talking about a pretty big leap here in price, and at least nothing really stutters. It takes just a moment to render, and then more complex pages like this will still load back really without any problems. What I will say from the software department, though, is OS level upgrades to something in the future, such as Android 13, is not something quite as consistent on some of these OEMs, and that's one area where I think Humidigi could also potentially improve on. However, for the most part, again, this current version of the OS, at least, is working quite well. Now, other areas, including standard communication, such as making phone calls, it's also handled really without any problems on the Bison 2. Folks said that they were able to hear me loud and clear, even, again, in outdoor spaces, so no complaints there, with pretty strong reception quality once again. Some final remarks here in terms of gaming performance, I would say the Helio P90, again, it's not going to outperform, of course, flagship chipsets, but it's no slouch in terms of the GPU. Everything seems to be handled pretty well, especially on mid-tier games with simpler titles and animations. If you're playing back some heavier titles, getting more into AAA territory, things like Asphalt or PUBG, on those games you will start to notice a little bit more of hesitation at times, but everything is still playable. You could always choose for medium graphic settings as opposed to ultra high, and that will get you an even smoother experience. But again, there's really nothing from the Play Store that this phone can't play, uh, and overall remains as a pretty solid experience. Still, I wouldn't say this is really a gaming-centric phone. If you are, again, looking for the fastest performance here, then you'll still ideally want to pick a device with a newer, more powerful chipset. As long as you aren't expecting miracles, you can wait for an extra second or two when it comes to loading things along, and everything here still plays really without any problems. Now perhaps this also touches on things like battery life, which as aforementioned, the P90 being a relatively energy efficient chip coupled with a massive battery and maybe a little bit beneficial here would be the lack of a fast refresh rate. We are talking about a phone that just goes and goes and goes without really having to die. So this is a device that you can definitely use for two to three days before you have to top it off and recharge it once again. So it's definitely an endurance champion. So that's more or less it as far as our quick hands-on review of the Umidigi Bison 2 series. Overall, I would say, again, it's a incremental upgrade compared to last gen, primarily in having a slightly more modern, larger display, coupled with uh, also having a larger battery, which definitely is appreciated, but doesn't necessarily feel too much bulkier or heavier compared to before, which is awesome, and still retains many of the positive attributes, including the ruggedness. Although it's not perfect, I think for this price, it already is a very competitive showing and one of the best value rugged Android smartphones yet again. So you can check out more details if you're interested in the links down below. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.